Hello, my fellow Ripplers. This is Chris Miles, your cash flow expert and anti financial advisor. Welcome to our show that's for you and about you. Those of you that work so hard for your money, you want your money to start working harder for you right now. You want that freedom, cash flow, and prosperity today, not 30 or 40 years from now, but right now to live that life that you love, doing what you love with whom you love. But most importantly, guys, it's about living a life of purpose and impact because as you're blessed financially, as a rippler, you can create that ripple effect through the lives of others. And so, guys, I'm, pr- I'm so appreciative to be here today. Thank you so much for tuning in, for binging, sharing. By the way, thank you for helping bring our show to be number one on Blog Talk Radio. That was kind of cool to see for the number one finance show. Um, so appreciate you guys doing that and, uh, and just everything you guys do. As a quick reminder, you know, check out our website, moneyripples.com, especially if you're saying, hey, how can I get my money working for me harder so I don't have to keep working so hard for money? Go contact us. If you feel like you're in a place where you got money sitting around and you know, want to know how to get it to create real passive income for you today, go ahead and check us out at moneyripples.com and contact us. Please. Chris Miles was able to retire twice by the time he was 39 years old, but he's not content to just enjoy his own financial freedom and peace of mind. Chris wants you to have your own ripple effect so you can live free today. He's not the financial advisor you expected. He's the anti-financial advisor you deserve. He's jumping behind the mic right now, ready to make waves. Here's Chris Miles. All right, guys. So I got a special guest today here, David Richter, who I have worked hard to make sure we get him on this show today because um, <laughs> David is is the perfect guest for this show because, I mean, one, he's been in the real estate business for a while, right? But two, he gets the money part of it too. So especially if you're an active real estate investor or you're looking to become more active in your real estate business, you've got to tune into this. And, and I guarantee even if you're a business owner, you're going to learn something from this too. Uh, just give you a little bit of background on David. So he, like I said, he's a real estate investor that's closed over 850 deals. And this is everything from like wholesale, turnkey flips, owner financing, rentals, lease options, and on and on and on. So basically, whatever kind of financial strategy or investment strategy you can think of, he's probably done it, right? Um, he went from like five deals a month to over 25 deals a month with his business. But I realized that as money was coming in, it was also going out, right? Because there's a difference between creating a lot of money and creating a lot of profit. And that was something that he realized was a big thing. And now it's become a huge mission of his that he's built a company called Simple CFO Solutions that uh, this goal is to really transform this real estate investing industry so that real estate investors can view finances and really bring real financial clarity and freedom into their lives. So David, welcome to our show. Thanks, Chris. I'm really happy to be here. Happy to share the message. Yeah, absolutely. So so give us a little bit of backstory on you and just uh, you know, with your background going into real estate, what led you there and what kind of led you to take this path too? So I read Rich Dad, Poor Dad, like a lot of investors. I oh, yeah. started with that book in college. Friend gave it to me, did my first deal uh, right out of college, which was awesome. I was mm-hmm. uh, rented it out for a little bit, then actually lived in the house for a while, then did a lease option with it once we moved out and the tenant cashed me out six months later. And I was like, yeah, this is good. Like, let's keep doing this. So that's when I started working with an investment company too. And they were, they started out, you know, probably that five deal, five to seven deals a month mark. And we scaled it up to about the 25 or 30 deals a month. And I got to sit in every seat too. So I got to see every type of exit strategy, but then also sit in like acquisitions, disposition, marketing, sales, you know, like the transaction coordination, the, <laughs> the financial portion. So I got to see how a business functions. So not just a real estate company, but like how a team functions, mm-hmm. the leadership team got to be on the leadership team there, you know, and got to actually see the different parts of the business. And that opened my eyes, especially when I sat in the finance seat, because yeah. there's so much pushed about the marketing, the operations, the systems, the people, the processes, and like it's crickets over on the financial side because your <laughs> CPA or bookkeeper is supposed to take care of that stuff. Right. So I got to sit in that seat and I said, wow, there's like a lot of great information here right from the books. And like, why aren't we talking about this ever? Like, why aren't we yeah. making decisions from this or, you know, at least letting it guide us? So that was really eye opening to me. And at that time, too, we moved across the country uh, at the end of that period that I worked with them and to move closer to family. I started working with another investor and saw like the first thing was I want to go in your books I want to like see where you are right now and they were they weren't a total mess but they needed some cleanup so we I went in there helped their bookkeeping team get it cleaned up and then like presented them with like hey 
found out that he was super under leveraged on his properties and he was able to go and get and refinance and get you know hundreds of thousands of dollars in his pocket from this because he had no idea where he was you know leveraged on his properties and that was you know then he could take that and do anything he wanted with it and he looked at me and said hey this has changed my life. And I said, I got to bring this to more investors and more business owners. And that's where Simple CFO was really born was hmm. the power that the numbers tell of your story. And hmm. like how many people don't want to face their story or don't yeah. want to face the numbers and mm -hmm. don't want to actually look at them. And that's where I was like, here, at least look at them, have a team here at Simple CFO that cares about you. That's going to present it to you in a non-lethal manner of like, <laughs> not that you're stupid or, you know, you should be embarrassed, but of like, Here's where we are. Here's where we can go. Like now that we have the roadmap, but a lot of people don't even have their story or know what that story is telling them. So that really resonated with me once he said, you changed my life and said, I got to start Simple CFO. So that was the whole premise of real estate investor to now helping the, you know, the industry with the financial side of their business and the financial strategy and, you know, just basic financial things too. That's fascinating. So you were even like, you weren't just doing like accounting type things. Like you were really looking at saying, Hey, like I noticed your return on equity is kind of low on these properties. Let's get more leverage and things like that. Mm -hmm. You were analyzing like all the numbers, weren't you? Exactly. As a CFO, because a lot of people think with their CPAs or the bookkeepers, they mm -hmm. give them the reports, like maybe a profit and loss or something, yeah. or maybe a balance sheet. And that all is past data. It's past numbers. It's like what's happened. And with the CFO, they should be looking at your current data and then analyzing that to see, okay, how's the future data coming in? And for real estate investing, I think it's super important because flips don't always happen and close mm -hmm. when you want them to, or maybe the market's really hot and you get a super hot deal and you close a bigger deal than you thought. And like, mm -hmm. where are you going to put the extra money now? You know, like, or what are you going to do with this deal? So that's where I feel like you got to have someone on the team looking at the numbers from a different perspective rather than just here's what's happened, you know, good job, you know, or hey, hey, something as bad is going on here. You need to take a look at this. So that's good for one piece. But yeah, I think it's important to have the holistic view of your finances and the different things you can capitalize on inside of your numbers. Yeah, you're, you're basically doing like a very grander scale of what we do for the for like the passive investor, right? Like we're just okay. you know, where they have a few properties, you know, we're like if somebody says, Hey, I've got 20 properties. Can you analyze them? I'm like, Oh, that sucks. You know, <laughs> but you know, yeah, we can, you know, uh, but that's a lot, you know, where somebody's more of an active investor, they're probably going to do something more like this saying, Hey, right. I need to clean yeah. this up because I, especially if they're just focused on the transaction, if they're, cause uh, remind me on the predictive index, I think I know the answer, but were you an individualist? Is that right on that assessment? No, I'm Maverick. Actually. You're Maverick. Oh, so you're like yeah. a lot of the other guys that you're talking to. They're all right. Mavericks exactly. and captains out there shooting up exactly. the world. That's why on the team, the CFO team are not all Mavericks. They're all that either analyzers or people that know yeah. how to take the data, but are also good communicators too, of mm -hmm. being able to say, because that's where I see in this industry as well too, that not being able to just clearly articulate and talk on a level that's not the financial gobbledygook you hear uh -huh. out there. There's a, there's a good term for you in the financial world, gobbledygook. <laughs> gobbledygook but, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So the financial stuff that people talk about, you know, like even me saying P&L, like that's a profit and loss. That's an yeah. income statement. Your income and expenses are there. It's, you know, there's so much jargon out there mm -hmm. where it's like, here's how we talk to the business owner. Here's how we help them and communicate that to them. And yeah, you're right. We work with a lot of investors who have either active, you know, they're doing at least several deals a month and they've yeah. got a portfolio, you know, having, um, you know, more than, you know, just a few properties. So yeah, that's, those are the types of people that we're working with uh, yeah. right now as fractional CFOs. Yeah. And then explain that fractional CFO concept. Cause I know it's starting to become a, a bigger term because it's I, I, like, whenever I see Facebook groups, it's like the thing that people are all begging for, right. Cause they don't want right. to have to hire a full-time CFO or they feel like they can't afford it. So explain this whole term about fractional CFO and what that is. In my head, it's just a part-time CFO. I mean, that's yeah. really what it is. Uh -huh. It's, you're not going to be paying $150,000, $200,000 a year for a fractional CFO, unless you're at that level. I mean, yeah. you can still have, if you are at that level, but usually you're going to be hiring a full-time person right there mm -hmm. on your, on your staff. If you're that, if you're that big of a company to afford someone at 150 or 200,000 a year. So with us, it's usually a fraction of that price. So there's fractional. And also we're not there all the time. 
you know, like mm-hmm. we're not sitting in the seat. So we don't meet as often, usually because that's, we don't need to meet as often. We're meeting on the right. high level numbers. We're providing, because we base our pricing on value too, not on hourly or anything. So it's mm-hmm. like, what value are we really providing? And it's that we're helping keep the money, you know, like they're good at creating the wealth. Let us help them keep the wealth and more yes. from the business strategy than individual tactics, you know, like, mm-hmm. oh, invest in this stock or do this yeah. thing or whatnot. It's more the overall strategy. And the fractional part is really the cost is a lot less. And the time involvement with the CFO is they're not going to be there every day in the other room, you know, for you to go in there and ask them a question. It's going to be either an email or a virtual call or something like that with our team in order to really get the picture. And so that's where, but (laughs) which is funny too, because a lot of owners don't, it money is so emotional to Mm -hmm. everyone. So it's really uncomfortable a lot of the times to get on the phone. So as a fractional CFO, this kind of gives you the ease, the easing into let's talk about where you are. Let's do this. We're not going to meet every day because we don't need that anxiety every day. Like you need to be going out there, creating a deal folk, doing what you do best. And then we'll meet, you know, on this rhythm. And that's really what a fractional CFO, I feel like it's a good transition from you're now just a onesie twosie mom pop investor to really a small business owner where you now need like a fractional CFO to bridge that gap until you're a medium to large size company where you're like, you know what, it's time. I need a Mm -hmm. full-time CFO. We need to be having weekly meetings here, you know, Mm -hmm. and like, these are the reports I need to be seeing every day on the cash position, you know, and like, until you're at that point. This is a good interim because I would also say fractional CFO, because a lot of people think, well, are you a CPA or are Mm. you a bookkeeper? And I say, no, not at all. Those two we have on our team if you need them, but we're really that in between. It's really the strategy, the overall business financial strategy is Mm. where we come in as fractional CFOs because the CPA is like that specialist. Like if I had to equate it to a doctor's office, Mm -hmm. the bookkeeper is like a nurse. You know, they're taking your temperature, they're making sure you're good at, you know, they're checking your chart every day, making sure everything's up to date. So when the doctor comes in, he can check your overall health. So we're like the doctor in that scenario. Then the the CPA is kind of like a specialist. Oh, you need surgery on your, you know, you need need surgery on your leg. There you go. Mm -hmm. We got to get you to, you know, that, that right specialist for you. So that's where I feel like that's where we fall into. And a fractional is just basically part-time and lesser cost than you would for a full-time CFO. Yeah. And kind of like you mentioned too earlier is that, you know, you come from that paradigm of being like that CEO level type person, right? Like being yep. that guy, that's kind of like the take charge, run the ship, or in your case, you know, running all seats of the business, which can only work so yep. far. Cause if you want to scale up, it just won't happen. Like you will drive yourself crazy. You will have leaks, money leaks everywhere. Right. Yep. And so be able to say, all right, here, I can avoid the, the, really the, brain pain that comes with trying to talk to a CPA, if the CPA is even talking to you, right. You know, trying to keep them accountable and trying to get them reporting stuff, you know, or be able to help you plan ahead for the, for the next year, or even in this year. Right. Uh, Just all those things, all those things are just distractions from helping you essentially increase the top line, but you're really there to help make sure that they have the bottom line, which is they're actually taking money home. They're not just bragging about how they have this multiple seven figure year business but they're broke as heck, right? (laughs) Right. Where most people come to us. And that's where I say money is so emotional because they'll come to us and be like, Hey, I just had one in the recent week here, two weeks ago, say we're making money hand over fist, but I have no idea where my cash is. Like, I don't Uh get it. (laughs) Like we just keep bringing the money in and yeah, like you hit hit the nail on the head. It is, we, there's two different specific skill sets there, creating the wealth and keeping the wealth. And you have to have yeah. people in your corner that can help you keep the wealth, like Chris and like Simple CFO, like on this side of the, the the ball game. And that's really what we help that bottom line. Yeah. What are some other common pitfalls you see them falling into? Maybe like the ones before they come to you, they're like, okay, I need help now. In fact, it's probably triage at this point, you know? <laughs> <laughs> right. That's where they don't focus on it at all. Some mm-hmm. people will come to us and they are doing like six, seven figures and They don't even have a set of books or anything like they don't, Mm. they don't have a scoreboard or scorecard at all. And that's where I feel like the, like a QuickBooks system like that is like a CRM for your money. It's categorization and it's telling you where, what's happening and where it has gone. So it's like, some people don't even have that at Mm -hmm. that level. 
then the other people who do, it's they don't have a background in it. So they felt embarrassed up to this point of like, hey, I need to talk to this or it's so uncomfortable to talk to my CPA or bookkeeper mm-hmm. because I, I don't have any education on this part, nor do I want to. I'd rather have brain surgery than talk to mm-hmm. you know the financial people on my team. And so a lot of people just avoid it until it becomes an issue. They might hire a bookkeeper and just say, dear God, please help them to just do this stuff without any acknowledgement from me or any input from me because I have no idea what I'm doing. And that's yeah. where those people also get into the scary situation of like, okay, now they owe a bunch of taxes they didn't know they owed, or maybe they say they owe taxes, but nothing's correct. So they don't really know, is this really what they owe? You know, so, or like, yeah. you know, what are they taking from the business? Are they actually paying themselves? So like these yeah. things that business owners get their, get, they have a view of money mm-hmm. and it's more about their view of money that we help them and the decision-making process than it is about finding the right bookkeeper, having the right CPA, if we can get that first and get them confident about how they view money and the decision-making process that they can come up with, that's where we see the biggest turnaround because so many people come to us. That's the biggest pitfall is they don't have confidence in their money making decisions. And that's That's really what it is stemmed from. So, yeah. Yeah. It's kind of like when we had Mike McCallowitz on earlier, you know, with talking about profit first and stuff. And I know you guys are huge proponents and you know, actually, are, I think you're licensed to do that too, or something, right? Yep. So Yes, we are. Yeah. But like, uh, we talked about like, you know, a uh, profit, how you, you know, if you're always reinvesting in your business, you're not profitable. You're just spending money, right? If you, right. Don't, if yeah. you can't actually take home profit on a regular basis and buy that freedom back, you just have a rat race business, you know, and yep. it doesn't matter what Kiyosaki says, like you own a business, right? Like, Oh, I'm in the B quadrant. No, you're not. You yeah. are an E quadrant within your own business. You know, you are <laughs> right. trapped, you know? <laughs> Yep. And, uh, and, I, and I know we've seen people too, they like, have cash crunches. Like they're like, oh, I got this best opportunity, but where'd my cash go? I don't have enough cash. I have to wait for deals to close and they're hustling, right? I mean, is that yep. the kind of people you see a lot of times in your business? Oh yeah. It's the rat race is not just for W2 employees. I mean, if you, <laughs> if you jump into business mm-hmm. and you know, the E-Myth is such a great book from the concept of like building a, a business with systems. Is it as always as easy as that? No, it's, but it is something that you need to be thinking about and building those systems around it. And a lot of people don't have systems around their finances. Like a lot of people need help getting just business systems in place for sales, marketing, and operations. Mm -hmm. And that's the three that they usually think of first sales, marketing, and operations and finance is like the back burner of like, I'll get to it when I get to it because no one, the IRS is not banging down my door yet. So like, I'll just get to that then (laughs) when, if they focused on that, that could help get them to where they really want to be faster and affect the sales marketing operation systems in their business. But, oh yeah, your question of like, is that what you see? That is 95% of the calls that I have. (laughs) I had a very different call today where he was like, we're actually in a really good position, but like, I want to step out of this role and I want someone else to be the fractional CFO. Like that happens 5% of the time. The typical yeah. investor business owner comes to us and says, I am sick of this rat race I'm on. And please just help me get off of that. There was a lady mm-hmm. last week that just signed up. So so was like, I called you a year ago, thought I wasn't ready. And I wish I would have moved forward a year ago <laughs> because like now I feel like we've just spun our wheels, you know, like for yep. a whole year now. And I said, yeah, we like, that's what we do. We help you get off that rat race and really get the mindset of getting out of that rat race. How are we building reserves? How are we actually making headway in our business? Is our net worth increasing? Like, what are we doing to actually, what is our goalpost? And are we getting, you know, like, are we getting closer to where we actually want to be rather than just spinning in that wheel every day? I love it, man. Amen to that. Cannot have that. We cannot have that, especially when the show is all about freedom. We can't have people like living in in poverty, impoverished, even if they're making millions, you know, or hundreds right. of thousands or whatever they're making in their business. Right. So, yep. um, totally agree. So uh, this has been awesome content. If people want to follow you and, and get to know your stuff better, right. Yeah, what would yeah. they do? How would they find you? So a couple of different ways, simple CFO solutions.com is to work with us. If you have an active real estate or just an active business and you need that fi- uh, fractional CFO, as far as like our content, I've got the group Profit First for Real Estate Investors mm. uh, Facebook group. So if you research that, uh, it's a private group. So just say you saw us on Chris's 
you know, podcast. So that way we let you in. And then mm-hmm. the other one is uh, the Profit First REI podcast. So if you're listening to this podcast, go and search and just type in Profit First for REIs and it'll be inside of the, any podcast place that you listen to those. And that's just all free content. Basically people who have implemented the Profit First system and you know how they're using that inside of their real estate investing businesses or their personal businesses that they have. So that's a couple of different ways that you can get more content. Perfect. Awesome. We'll have that for the show notes and for everybody to see there as well. But uh, David, I really appreciate your time. This is such good stuff and uh, really timely too, especially as we're moving into fall, right? Like we've, yeah. you know, I know a lot of people are already worried about either one last year's taxes and what's happening <laughs> there and, or two, what's going to happen next year, because maybe they haven't yep. worried about last year because they're trying to beat yep. the deadlines now. So uh, exactly. yeah, I really appreciate the value you provide here and, and definitely encourage anybody who's like, Hey, I'm in that boat you know, reach out, go learn more about what they've got. So again, David, thank you for your time. And uh, everybody else, remember, it's one thing to be a hearer of the word. It's another thing to be an actual doer of the word. So go and take action, create those results in your life and create that freedom today. Make it a wonderful and prosperous week. We'll see you later. Visit us online at moneyripples.com for more resources to help you fix money leaks and get your money working harder for you now.